Today, I want to talk to you about return of investment versus return on investment, right? Sometimes it makes more sense to pick up something that doesn't necessarily look as sexy, but it's going to be a more stable investment. It's going to give you a higher internal rate of return because when you resell it, you're probably going to get more money, right? Cash flow investors, make sure you factor in the resale, okay? Let's jump into it now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here. I am here for you. And today's show is all about my dude Mark in Minneapolis. Minnesota and Mark, I got a deal for you, right? This is one I found, right? You and I have been going back and forth, doing a lot of deals. Uh, you're trying to stay above the 115k price point, uh, but I think with a lot of the deals you're looking at and that you're sending to me for review, you're trying to fit a round peg in a square hole. So you're just looking at a lot of stuff that's just overpriced, honestly. It's stuff that should be priced under 115, but the sellers just chose to overprice it. And you're just, you got that arbitrary Mendoza line because of the particular lender you're utilizing, right? That's not to say that there aren't good investments above that price range. It's just the ones you've been sending me are not those. Today's property is a good one, well above that price point. And this is something I think is worth the kind of money that you're looking at spending. So let's jump into the investment now. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's going to be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's going to be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back. Let's pull up the property, right? So this one, folks, this one is not as sexy as what I think a lot of people uh, typically go to the Cleveland market to find, right? They're looking for crazy cash on cash returns. This one is not going to give that to you. You're not going to get like, oh my God, the numbers. You're not going to get crazy on the numbers, okay? But this one is a safe, solid investment. And sometimes, in my opinion, it's really important for investors to focus on return on or return of investment as opposed to just return on investment, right? I feel like a lot of people get blinded by great cash flow returns, and then they're buying properties that are a little higher risk uh, than maybe they have the stomach for, right? Like me personally, I have a diverse portfolio, right? I got some nice stuff like this, but I also have a ton of Section 8, okay? But I'm a full-time investor. I have a full-time business. I have a huge staff. I got 60 people working for me. I've sold over $200 million worth of real estate. I have over 1,200 separate income streams coming into my life, right? And I tell you that because you need to understand if you're going to only have a few income streams, right, you got your W-2 job and then you got a rental here, rental there, you're trying to get these income streams going. At the very beginning, I think you're better served if you're getting lower risk stuff, right? Because here's the deal. When I have a tenant, and right, you guys could watch the Tenants from Hell show. You see that all the time, right? We're very upfront about the fact that, yo, sometimes there's problems with these investments. If I got a tenant in like one or two or three or five of my rental properties, they're just jerk-offs, they're not paying rent, they're damaging the property, they're ODing on heroin, and we got to fucking throw their dead ass out and then re-rent the unit. Like all kinds of BS that comes along with being a rental property investor, right? But I got 1,200-plus streams of income coming in, folks. I just move through it. I plow through it. It's a blip. doesn't affect me, right? doesn't matter to me. But if you only have a couple income streams, those ups and downs and ups and downs, that could really sway things, right? So I want you guys to look at stuff like this as well. Numbers are going to not look as great, but this is one that your, your risk of having issues is super low, right? This is just a freshly renovated property in a B-grade area, right? And they've done this thing very, very well, right? This is super nice, okay? And this is a neighborhood where the two types of buyers are going to be landlords like you, but also you're going to get a lot of first-time home buyers uh, in this neighborhood, right? This is Parma, Ohio, largest suburb in the Cleveland market. I grade this as a B-grade area, very, very safe, stable investment. Now, 
The address, 3327 Hearststone Road, Parma. It's been on the market 44 days, but that is a bit of uh it hasn't really, right? It was on the market, then immediately sold, right? Went under contract. But because you're dealing with a lot of first-time home buyers, a lot of owner occupants in this neighborhood, what happened is this was somebody who already owned one home, and then they wanted to upgrade, move their family to the nicer home. So they did what's called a house sale concurrency. That's where a buyer will submit an offer to a seller and be like, yo, my offer's contingent on the normal stuff, appraisal, financing, inspection. But in addition... It's contingent on me selling my old house because I can't afford two mortgages at once, right? So the seller accepted that offer, but the buyer ran into issues selling their old house, right? Because that's the thing with these concurrencies, right? They're, I don't, I would never accept an offer with a home sale concurrency, right? Because not only do you have all the contingencies on your own deal, you have to make sure the buyer on your own deal gets all their stuff squared away. You have a complete third separate deal, third-party deal. You got another buyer, their agent, and getting all their stuff with their lender and their appraisal and their inspection all squared away. It's a whole mess. And what if that person then has a home sale concurrency as well? You're down this like crazy like rabbit trail. It's a whole mess, right? So what ended up happening is it wasn't going through fast enough. The seller bailed, and he's like, yo. Get your stuff together. I got to I gotta bounce, right? So now it's back on the market again. And I think an investor offer like yours would be very attractive, right? Because investors, we got a bunch of money. We don't have to do home sale concurrencies. So I think we got a shot at picking it up for a little bit less, right? Because as nice as it is, I don't think you could pay 180 and make cash flow. But I'd like to try to pick it up for you at 150 We pick it up at 150 We put a 10 in there for about 1299 right? It's a 3-2, beautifully done, right? So $12.99 comes in. After all said and done, fixed variable expense estimates, I think we'll be bringing home a little bit over seven grand. Now, $150K is the cost, but you only put down $37.5. Bank kicks in $112.5. It's a five cap or a 4.5% return on investment. But that is a misleading number, right? Just like sometimes it could be misleading going the other way, right? You get these cash on cash returns, and you got to understand, folks, we have factored in some things over the course of ownership, over 30 years, right? Go back to the chart here. Look, you got your capital expenditures. That's 77940, okay? And this is a double edged sword. This is going to cut both ways. That doesn't mean every single year you're spending 77940 on capital expenditures. No. What that means is over the average course of ownership, I anticipate you spending seven seventy nine a year on average, right? So that's things like your furnace, your roof, your hot water tank. Okay, so you take a furnace, about three grand. It's going to last you about thirty years. This one's new, right? So that's seven seventy nine. You're not spending any of that money towards the furnace for probably thirty friggin' years. You'll probably sell it before you replace it, right? So it's not like that seven seventy nine is getting spent. That's coming back to you in addition to your NOI, but I don't allow you to consider it in your brain to think about it as NOI because eventually you'll need a furnace. Same thing with your roof. They last about 30 years. You're looking at like 8K, right? But it's a brand new roof. You don't got to mess with it, right? Your vacancy and non-payment, I averaged that out for you, 779, right? You might have a tenant who lives in the house for 10 years, right? That's the thing. When you buy nicer assets like this, Assets where people are driven to rent in this area because they like the school system. They don't want to put their kids in the Cleveland School District, so they move them to Parma. They don't want to move because they don't want to change their kids' school. Think about that. There's 15 schools in the city of Parma, right? That's how you get longer tenancy. So that's 779, right? If they live there for 10 years, that's another seven grand on top of that profit, right? So if your tenants are getting evicted, all that stuff, that's an issue. And then that's just your repairs and your maintenance as well. That's seven seventy nine for that. The majority of your repairs and maintenance are going to be on older mechanicals. This one doesn't have those. And they're going to be when tenants are moving out and you have to do like a $5,000 turnover, $6,000 turnover, $7,000 turnover, things of that nature, right? So sometimes these numbers can be misleading. In my opinion, a property like this is going to run the best chance uh, at being a very stable investment for you, not something that's got really good years, really bad years, really good years, really bad years, right? This is like the perfect low-key investment where you can truly set it and forget it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.